In this video, we'll look at how to graph a reciprocal function. In particular, we're graphing the reciprocal of a line. The line we're given is y equals x minus 3, or f at x equals x minus 3. So we want to graph the reciprocal 1 over x minus 3. There's a little box down here. We'll do some work in that box. We're graphing 1 over x minus 3. First thing is vertical asymptote. This function, in fact any reciprocal function, has a vertical asymptote where the denominator would be 0. So ask yourself, what would make this denominator 0? The answer is not 0. If you sub 0 in here, 0 take away 3 is not 0, it's negative 3. But if you subbed in 3, this whole denominator would be 0. That's why the vertical asymptote is at x equals 3. There's also a horizontal asymptote for any reciprocal function at y equals 0. That is, 1 over anything, no matter what's in the denominator, as long as it's 1 on top, that reciprocal function will have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. And the last thing we need to graph is the shared points of the original line with the reciprocal line. They share the points at a y of 1 and a y of negative 1. So in order to see those points, I need to graph the original f and x. Let's do that now. There's different ways I could go about graphing it. I could use x and y intercepts, but that takes a little bit longer. I could make a table of values, but that also is a bit of a longer method. My preferred method is going to be use the slope and y-intercept. Right now I'm just making a nice even scale. And if you want, you could go watch a video on how to use slope and y intercept to graph. But I'll demonstrate it quickly here. I know from the equation of a line that this negative 3 is the y-intercept. And I know that the slope, seeing as there's no number here, is 1 over 1. So rise and run of 1 over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1. I can keep going. Over 1, up 1. Doesn't really matter now I've got my line. Over 1, up 1. Over 1, up 1. One more. <laughs> over 1, up 1. There's my line. Let's connect it with a ruler because we want to be accurate here. This is the original equation, f at x. And what's good about that is now we can see wherever this function, f at x, had a y of 1, it shares it with the reciprocal function. So here we are at a height or y value of 1. I'm going to put a little x here. This point has to be shared between them. And also wherever the function's at a height of negative 1, that's right here. So that also has to be shared between them. Okay, and now we've got our points. They have to share 4 comma 1 and 2 comma negative 1. Let's label the horizontal asymptote. Put a dashed line. It's as visible as you can. You don't want to make it too far off the axis. But we'll label this asymptote and call it y equals 0. That's the horizontal asymptote and a vertical asymptote at x equals 3, that's here. We'll label that x equals 3. Well, now we've got everything we need to make our equation. We know it's got to close in on this asymptote, but never quite touch it. it stays really close until it comes down to that shared point, and then it closes in on the horizontal asymptote, but never quite touches it. Don't forget to put arrows. Same thing over here. The way all reciprocals work, they have to close in on the asymptote, so it's closing in. It stays very, very close. Doesn't change its distance until it starts to get close to that turnaround point. Got to cross through that shared point. And then come down, infinitely close, but never touching. Make sure that your arrow doesn't come back out. It has to look like it's constantly getting closer. And there we have it, the graph of a reciprocal function. We got that graph by finding the vertical and horizontal asymptote and drawing the original so we can see where its shared points of y equals 1 and y equals negative 1 are. Don't forget to label your original equation and your reciprocal. And that's a graph.